Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Red Hat Summit 2018. Brought to you by Red Hat. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's exclusive coverage here in live in San Francisco, California for Red Hat Summit 2018. I'm John Furrier with John Troyer, my co-host analyst. This week he's the co-founder of Tech Reckoning, an advisory community development firm. Of course, I'm the co-host of theCUBE. Our next is Harry Mower, Senior Director of Red Hat Developer Group within Red Hat. He handles all the out, outward uh, community work, also making sure everyone's up to speed, educated, has all the tools. Of course, thanks for coming, joining on theCUBE today. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me again. Um, I'll see developer community is your customers, <laughs> they're your users. Um, open source is winning, everything's done out in the open. That's your job is to bring funnel things and goods to the, to the community. Yes. So take a minute to explain what you do and, the, and what's going on with your role uh, in the community for the Red Hat customers. Sure, so my group uh, really handles three things. It's the developer tools, our developer program, and the evangelism work that we do. Um, so I'll kind of start from the evangelism work. We've got a great group of uh, evangelists who go out around the world, kind of spreading the gospel of, of Red Hat, so to speak. Um, and they talk a lot about the things that are about to come in uh, the portfolio, specific to developer platforms and tools. Um, then we try to get them into the program, which gives the developers access to the products that we have today, um, and information that they need to be successful with them. Um, so it's very much about, um, uh, enterprise developers getting easy access to download, install, and get to hello world as fast as possible, right? And then we also build tools that are tailored to our platform so that developers can be uh, successful writing the code once they download And the, the goal is ultimately get more people coding mm -hmm. with Linux, with Red Hat, with open yep. source. Yep, it's driving more, uh, I mean, from in, inwardly facing, it's driving more adoption of our products, but you know, outward as the developer being our customer, it's, it's really to make them successful. And when I s took over this role, it was one of the things we needed to do was uh, really focus on who the developer was. Uh, develop, you know, there's a lot of different yeah. types of developers. And we really do focus on the nine to five developer working in, that works within all of our customers' organizations, right? And predominantly those that are doing enterprise Java for the most, uh, most part. But we're starting to branch out with that. But it's really those nine to five developers that we're targeting. Got to be exciting for you now because we were just in Copenhagen last week for KubeCon with Kubernetes you know, front and center. Everyone's super excited by this de facto formation around Kubernetes. Yep the role of containers that's going on there, yep. really kind of give a, a, kind of a, a fresh view and a clear view for the develop, your dev customer, yep. where things are sitting. So what, what, how do you guys take that momentum <laughs> and drive that home because that's getting a lot of people excited yeah. and also clarifying yep. kind of what's going on. If you're under the hood, you got some open stack. If you are a developer, yeah. you got app develop, you got this and you got orchestration here and you got containers. Yeah. Kind of the perfect storm for you guys. Yeah, and what we've been trying to do, sort of in the container space, uh, so one of the things we do, we have these kind of 10 big bets that we put on a wall that really drive our uh, uh, product decisions, right? And one of the, the first, maybe the second one we put on the wall was everything will be in containers, right? Um, and so we knew that it was important for developers to be able to use containers really easily, but we also knew that it's an implementation detail for them. It's not something that they really need to learn a lot about, but they need to be able to use. So we made a, an acquisition last year, uh, Code Envy uh, was, the, was the company, driving force behind Eclipse J. One of the great features of Eclipse J, a lot of people see it as a web-based IDE, but it's also a workspace management system that allows uh, developers' uh, development environments to be automatically containerized, posted and run on OpenShift at scale, right? So, um, and when we show the demo, it's really interesting because people see us coding in a browser and, oh, that's pretty neat. And then at the end of it, everyone starts to ask questions about the browser part and I say, yeah, but did you notice we never typed a Docker command, never had to learn about a, a, a Kubernetes file, it was always containerized right from the very beginning and now your developers are in that world without ever having to really learn it. And so that's really a big, big thing that we're trying to do with our tools as we move from classic clips on the desktop to these new web So simplifying, but also reducing things that they normally had to do before. Yeah. Reducing the steps to kind of... Yeah, we want to, yeah, we want to, I, people don't like when I say, I want to try to make them disappear into the background, but what I mean is simple and easy to use. We take care of, yeah. of being creative right, for right. them. And now is that, that that's OpenShift.io? Is that the is that is that where people get started with that? Actually, Eclipse J. Okay, so Eclipse J. So it starts okay. in Eclipse J, um, and then we take that technology and bring it into I/O as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about I/O then? You know the experience there and what sure. people are doing. Yeah. So I/O is is a concept product that we released last. Well, we announced last year at Summit. Um, it's really our vision of what an end-to-end -end cloud tooling platform is going to look like. Our bet is that. Um, 
many of our customers today take a lot of time to customize their integrated tool chains. Um, and because of necessity, because someone doesn't offer the fully integrated seamless one today, uh, many of our customers like their little snowflakes that they built, but I believe over time that the cost of maintaining that will become something that they are not going to like. Um, and that's one of the reasons why we built something like IO. It's hosted and managed by us and integrated. And what are people using it for? Is this for, is this for prototyping? Is this, uh, how are people, what are people doing on the system? Uh, today it's mostly for prototyping. Uh, one of the things we did here at this week's summit is we announced kind of a general availability for Java developers using public repos. Up until this point, it's always been kind of experimental. You weren't sure if your data was going to be gone if it was up or down. There's much more stability and uh, kind of a, a, a a more reliable SLA right now for those types of projects. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Well, let, I mean, pivoting maybe to the, the overall developer program. So developers.redhat.com, uh, yep. big announcement yesterday, you, you reached a million members, congratulations. Thank you for, yeah, that, thanks a million is what I put in my tweet. <laughs> um, it was, uh, it's been a really great journey. I started three years ago, we consolidated a number of the smaller programs together. So we had a base of about two, 300-ish developers and we've accelerated that adoption. Now we're over a million and growing fast, so it's great. That's great. What's the priorities as you go out? I mean, all these new tools out there, and I was just talking with someone, one of the, um, your partners here, we were out at a, at a beer thing last night, had talking, and, and I'm like, waterfalls dying in software development, but open source ethos is going into other areas, marketing, and so the DevOps concepts are actually being applied to other things, so how are you out, taking that outreach to the community? So as you take the new gospel, yeah. what techniques do you use? I mean, are you tweeting away, are you going in with, Blogging, content marketing, how are you get engaging yeah. the content? How are you getting it out in digital? Our key thing is the demo, right? So you saw a lot of great demos on stage uh, this week. Uh, Burr Sutter on our team did a phenomenal job every day with a set of demos. And we take those demos, those are part of the things we bring to all the other conferences as well. They become the center, uh, center stage for that because it's kind of the, the proof, proof of concept, yeah. right? It's the proof of what, what, what can be possible. And then we start to build around that. Um, and it, it helps us show what's possible. It actually helps get our product teams coalesced around an idea. Uh, they start to build better products, we bring that to customers, and then customer engagement starts early. Uh, but that's how we, that's, that's the key I mean, to demo's work. the ultimate content yeah, piece, it right? Like, and it, yeah, it forces everybody to- A real the demo, team. not a fake demo. And those were all, <laughs> that's the thing, the demos were so good, I think some of them, people thought they were fake. I'm like, bro, you didn't do a good enough job of like pulling the plug faster and showing yeah. that it was real, right? Yeah. But they're, yes, they're absolutely real demos, real technology working, and that um, creates a lot of momentum around. You guys see any demographic shifts in the developers? Obviously, there's a new wave of developers coming in, younger, certainly, right? Yeah. Um, you got the, uh, the, the older developers that know systems, so yes. you're seeing coexistence of different demograph demographics, old and young, kind of playing together. Yeah, so there's a full spectrum of age, there's a full spectrum of diversity, and geography, I mean, I, it's, not, it's obvious that every, to everybody that our growing markets are, are Asia, it's India and China right now. You'll, you'll see, you know, Chinese New Year, we see a dip in usage in our tools, or, you know, there, it's, it's very much, that's where the growth is. Uh, our, our, our base right now is still predominantly North America and EMEA, but all, all the growth is obviously Asian and awesome. uh, India. Harry, I wanted to talk about the role of the developer advocate a little bit. It's a relatively new role in the ecosystem. Not everybody understands it. I think some companies use a, a, a title like that in very different ways. Yes. Can you talk, I, but it's so important, uh, this peer-to-peer -peer learning, you know, putting a human face on the company, especially for a company like, like Red Hat, right? Yeah, yeah. Built from open source communities from the ground up. Can you talk a little bit about what is a developer advocate is, and I, am I even getting the title right, but what do they do here at Red Hat? Yeah, so it's funny, is it an evangelist, is it an advocate, and how do you distinguish the difference? So I spent a lot of time at Microsoft, we, we spent, a, we, you know, I think they pioneered a lot of that a long time ago, 10 or 12 years ago, really started doing that. And that, that, those ideas have matured. Um, many different philosophies of how you do it. I bring a philosophy here, and I'm working with Burr, um, that, you know, it's one thing to preach the gospel, but the end goal is to get them into church, right? And eventually get them to, you know, donate, right? <laughs> so um, our evangelists are really out there to convince and um, you know, get them to adopt. Other models where you're an advocate, it's about funneling, it's almost like a marketing, inbound marketing kind of uh, role where you're taking feedback from the developers and helping to reshape the product. We do a little bit of that, but it, it's, it's mostly about understanding what Red Hat has. Because when people look at Red Hat, they think that's the Linux I used to use, I started in college, right? And for us, we're trying to transform that view. Huge scope now. And that's why we're more of an evangelistic organization. I mean, Linux advocate. falls in the background, I mean, with, with cloud. Uh, Linux, that, isn't that what the old people used to like install? Like, yeah. it's, all, it's native now, so again, 
yeah. new opportunities. And yep. OpenShift is a big part of that. Yeah, and we, we work hand in hand. There's actually an OpenShift evangelism team that we work hand in hand with, and their job is really to, more of a workshop style engagement, and we, we get the excitement, bring them to them, they do the engagements, and then bring it. What's the, what's the bumper sticker to developers? I mean, obviously developers, um, mind share is critical. Mm -hmm. So they got they to see the picture. Linux helps a lot, it's all about the OS. What's the main, main uh, value proposition to the developers that you guys are trying to have up front and center the whole time? For Red Hat specific? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny, we, we just redid our, all of our marketing about the program, and specifically it's build here, go anywhere. And for, for two levels, right? With using Red Hat Technologies, being part of the open source community, you can take those skills and knowledge and go anywhere in your career, right? But also with our technology, you can take that and you can run it anywhere as well. You can take that technology and run it on-prem, run it on someone else's cloud, and it really is just, we, you know, where it's, we really give the developers a lot of options and possibilities, and when you learn our products and use our products, you can really go anywhere. So Harry, there's a, I loved how you just distinguished at the very beginning of the conversation uh, what, who the program is for uh, and that particular role, right? I sit down and I, I code enterprise products and, and glue stuff together and build new things, bring new functionality to market, shit. Excuse me. This <laughs> this week has been all about <laughs> speed to market, right? Yes. And that's the developers out there, right? Yep. I, see, I get so excited. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. It. That's okay. So, you can swear. Okay, I'll but, say it back. So. But, <laughs> but um, you know, there's a there's a lot of shifting roles in IT and in the tech industry over the last say decade or so. You know, do we expect the people who we used to call sysadmins are do they have to become developers? Open source contributors also are developers. But but it sounds like maybe the roles are clarifying a little bit. In uh, other than you know an OpenShift operator, uh, you know doesn't have have to be a developer, but does have to be, right. you know, know about APIs and things. I don't know, how are you looking so at it? So it's, I, I, I don't have too strong an opinion on this, but when, when, I, when I talk to other people and we kind of talk about it, you know, the role of the, oper so we made operations easy enough that the developers can do a lot of it, but they can't do all of it, right? And there's still a need for operations people out there. And those roles are a lot around being almost automation developers. Like things that you do in like an Ansible playbook or, you know, what other, other technology you might use. So there is an element of operations people having to start to learn how to do some sort of coding, but it's not the same type of that a normal developer will do. So we're somehow we're, we're meeting in the middle a little bit. But I, I'm I'm so, I'm so focused on the developer part that so I really don't have too strong. Well, let us know how we can help. We we love your mission. We we the Cube is an open community brand. We'd love to get any kind of content. Let us know when your big events are. Uh, certainly want to promote it. So open source is one. It's winning. It's changing and you're starting to see commercialization happen in a nice way where projects are preserved upstream, people are making great products out of it, so a great opportunity for careers, and building great stuff. I mean, new applications, startups, it's all over the place, so it's great stuff. So congratulations, and thanks for coming on theCUBE. It's theCUBE, out in the open here, in the middle of the floor at Moscone West, bringing all the coverage from Red Hat Summit 2018. We'll be right back with more after this short break. I'm John Furrier with John Troyer. We'll be right back. <laughs>